This is my current desk setup. I have a 32 inch Roku TV for my main monitor with an older monitor alongside of it. My second monitor is set up in landscape and it doesn't quite match up. I'd like to free up some desk space and put the monitor into portrait mode. I've heard that there are some benefits to doing this, such as more desk space, watching vertical format videos, and stacking programs vertically. Although I don't want to go too crazy like this guy did. That just looks like work. There are some monitors that just pivot in the back middle. A simple twist of the screen and one workspace changes into another. I wanted to try this and could have just forked over the money it takes to buy one, but why make it easy on myself? I feel like it's time for a change. Oh yeah, this was kind of annoying too. At the top of my screens, my mouse pointer would just jump about 4 inches. In the middle it would jump slightly, and at the bottom it would just shoot straight across. This may be a resolution thing or possibly a computer setting as I learn later, but maybe I can fix this in the process. Let's jump into the display settings and see if this computer is even capable of a portrait mode monitor. Huh, there it is. Looks like it worked, I'm off to the races. Measure twice, rotate the portrait mode once I always say. I just wanted to see how it would line up before I did anything. Honestly, I think it's going to work pretty good, and now I'm even more excited than I was when I dreamed this change up. Let's get these cables unplugged and see what we have to work with here. I mentioned before that I used to have a monitor capable of rotating. This one unfortunately has a fixed base for landscape mode, so it's a good thing I have a 3D printer capable of making a new setup. The design I have in mind to print is something I've done on a smaller scale for my cell phone. This is a very handy one I use often, and I have a few variations of it too because it's easy to just clip my phone in place to the spring-loaded mount. The one on the right has an adapter I also printed to make it functional with my GoPro tripod and other GoPro accessories. On the left is one I made to fit a quick connect on the top of one of my tripods. I also found this quarter 20 tripod adapter with a GoPro mount, which allows me to mount this phone holder to nearly any tripod. So that's the basis of the concept. Make it like an oversized cell phone holder. Time to get this thing apart. Looks like it's just one screw here in the middle, and it doesn't even need a tool. I underestimated how easy this thing was going to be. Well, I guess that only took off the legs. There's still an adapter that's sticking out that I'd like to remove to keep the whole assembly clean. Fortunately, they left access to the screws that hold it on. It's a good thing I like taking things apart. And there's the metal bracket that holds everything together. I think I'm going to stop here and leave this on since it only sticks out the back and not the side. Now I have no doubt that a plastic stand will work since this one was made from plastic. Time to get some measurements so I can start modeling. It looks like it's 21 and a half inches wide by 13 inches tall and one half inch thick. I looked up the specs on my Ender 3 and it has a build volume of 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters by 250 millimeters. After I had my monitor modeled up, I decided to see how crazy this print was going to have to be by modeling up the Ender 3 build volume for a comparison. Once I had the build volume modeled, I dropped it into an assembly with the monitor, and I can already tell you it's going to need more than one piece. So here's what I came up with. A tripod base so it doesn't wobble on my desk, an intermediate riser to meet the dimension I need, a slotted adapter for adjustment, and a piece that can be spring-loaded to hold the top. I made all the screws to be 3D printed as well, so I thought that a set of gussets would look cool and take some of the strain off the screws. I used the same build volume box shown with the monitor earlier to make sure that all these parts could be printed on my machine. I hovered the box over the left view and the front view. And when I got to the top view, I realized that if I had a tall enough printer, I'd be able to do it all in one print. And then once I get over wanting a bigger printer, I realized it was going to look pretty cool when it was done. So with that said, let's get printing. After I got some bed leveling issues out of the way, I was able to get the first print going. I don't think I could afford it in material for this long print to fail at the end. And if I remember right, it was something over 30 hours. I've been experimenting with the tree supports in Kira. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with them. They don't use much material and they're sometimes more interesting than the model itself. 
This one looks like I just removed his heart. But not bad for the first print of the batch. Off to the second print. This tree support is kind of interesting. I can clearly make out a head and the arms are up in the air. And it snuck two of these things in there too. I'll give them something to worship here. I swapped material to pink thinking it would just give it a little offset. And my infill on this one is pretty much solid because I thought it would give it a little bit of a spring. There's nothing interesting about these tree supports. If all these work, it'll probably save me 10 bucks in screws. Who needs a hardware store? Well, that's all of them. Time to get it all together. I guess it makes sense to work from the bottom up with the tripod base, the intermediate riser, and two of the larger screws. Just thread it together. I probably oversized these screws a bit, but hey, they're made out of plastic and I had to roll. One thing I didn't think about was the tight space to get my fingers into to tighten up these screws. I'm gonna need a wrench set to finish tightening these. Now, I found something out about my tool set when I went to do this. My set only goes up as big as 3 eighths of an inch. So I figured I'd jump into SolidWorks and make a simple half inch hex extrude that fits into the socket ahead of the screw. The other side I would just use a half inch socket wrench to tighten everything down. Speaking of socket wrenches, remember this one? It's from a video I posted a little while ago. You might recognize it. Pretty much all the models I make, I spend the time to upload them to my channel. Be sure to check out the rest of the channel and let me know in the comments what you think of each one. It's a reversible ratchet that accepts standard hex bits. The best feature it has is the reversal mechanism without having to flip the wrench over. Well, those were kind of shameless plugs, but just one more. All of the model videos I post to YouTube, I also upload the models themselves to Thingiverse and Printables. If you feel like you want to download these models, feel free. I went to my bolt bin instead of printing out the hex extrude. During all this, I realized that a 5 16th hex screw also had a half inch head. Gave it a try in the printed socket head screw, and it thought it worked pretty neat. Figured it would save me some print time and a little bit of material. I guess I could have used my printed reversible ratchet here. I was in sport mode trying to get this thing together, but hindsight is 2020, right? I just have to admire this thing so far. With these two pieces combined, it's already one of my biggest prints. I get this question a lot. Do 3D printed plastic threads work with normal threads? Probably had this question asked a lot since I posted a few videos in YouTube Shorts about how to make printable male and female threads using SolidWorks. Here's a quick sample of the short, as if it wasn't short enough, and I've already put some models on the printables and thing versus some simple male and female threaded assemblies that use standard printed threads. What I have in front of me is a 5 8 11 socket head screw printed entirely from semi-transparent PLA material. To answer this question, I ran into the hardware store and grabbed a hot dip galvanized steel nut to test the two together. As you can see, they work together pretty well. So does this answer the question or do you want to see more? I guess I can try it with a smaller screw I printed for this assembly. It's a half 13 socket head screw. Let's try it with this stainless steel nut.
so they both work together pretty well. I wouldn't use it to hold critical parts together, but at least it's an option in some situations, right? I know what you're thinking though. What about the printed female threads? How do they work with male threaded steel screws? Here you can see the half 13 steel screw threading into the printed thread. I guess you're going to have to trust me on this one, just like I had trust in my autofocus. And to settle the matter, I have a bigger 5 8 11 screw to try. To be honest, I'm not disappointed. So I hope that clears things up. Time to get on with the show. Let's get these gussets on. I printed them in a different PLA color to offset some of the black material I've been using a little bit. I don't know if it really needs the gussets, but I thought it would give the assembly an appealing look. Since I needed to print this assembly in multiple pieces, there was kind of a built-in way to get adjustment into how vertical this monitor sits in relation to the main monitor. Here you can see the slotted holes that allow the top of the monitor to be pushed forward or backward, then locked in place. I'll show you what this part is later. The final piece is the one that holds the top of the monitor. Again with slotted adjustment, just in case I had a measurement off. Well, there it is. It's all put together. And yeah, way to plan ahead. When I first started 3D printing, I never thought I'd have a large assembly like this one. It tips the scale at over 900 grams. That's almost a full roll of filament. So I guess you can say this thing cost me somewhere between $15 and $20 to make. And I was overly excited to get it installed and see how it worked, but I didn't pay attention to the lighting in the room, so my apologies for that. First thing I noticed was that there was a gap at the top between the screens. Luckily, I built in a way to adjust for this. It looks like the gap's gone, so I'm going to tighten things down. After all that, I wasn't too excited to see the double bezel between the screens, so I decided to just tuck the second monitor slightly behind the main one. Time to plug this thing in and see what we're working with. Oh yeah, that little bracket in the back. So here's what it turned out to be. I got it centered with the main monitor, and I feel like my desk space has opened right up. And maybe it's enough room for more activities. So that mouse pointer thing I mentioned earlier was still happening, but I spent painstaking hours researching the fix. So here it is. Overall, I think it was a fun project and it turned out pretty good. So let me know what you think. <laughs>